Now, remember I told you at the beginning that if you don't say out loud, wow, after the, loud wow. Speaker, the last speaker goes, you'll be thinking it. Uh, in case you've been wondering what that device is up on the uh, platform there, our last speaker is going to explain to you what that's all about. And that is Tucker Dunham, KD2JPM. Uh, Tucker is 17 and he is a junior at the electronics program at Warren County Technical School and is here with that wonderful group that I spoke to you about before with the green shirts from, uh, from Warren Technical School. And uh, they have sent me presenters for the last few years that have been here. I have been to that school. It's a phenomenal opportunity. And they have fabulous mentors like Kevin, who's in the back, and my friend Bob. And um, yesterday at the Instructors Forum, a classmate of Tucker's, Abby Hine, KD2PUA, who worked with him on this project, gave a little coming attractions introduction at the instructors forum yesterday. The two of them worked on this project together. Uh, and she gave a summary for the benefit of the teachers who were there yesterday. In an emergency, moving data is key. If it's a list of needed supplies or health and welfare, traffic, communicating lots of data quickly and accurately is necessary. Tucker will demonstrate a plan where small, portable, self-sufficient digi-feeders are deployed in strategic places to provide a data communications background. So the title of his presentation is Solar powered digi -peters. Okay, Tucker. My name is Tucker Dunham, and my project is a daily network for emergency communication. My name is Tucker Dunham, KD2JPM. I got my license from a freshman in high school two years ago. Currently, I'm a junior in the electronics program at Warren County Technical School. This year, I participated in Skills USA and placed second in the New Jersey State Finals. Skills USA is a national partnership between students, teachers, and industry to create a working workforce for America. Students compete in skill based competitions regionally and nationally. The reason for my project is to provide a solution for emergency communications. This map of Puerto Rico depicts cell phone outages after Hurricane Maria. Darker colors indicate complete outages. According to the FCC, after the storm, 90.3% of cell sites were inoperable. The situation was so dire that the ARRL and American Red Cross assembled a team of volunteer amateur radio operators who traveled to Puerto Rico to assist in providing communication. In the emergency, passing information is the most important thing. This is where ham radio operators are critical. Here are some examples of the vital information that needs to be passed along to people and emergency services. Typically, ham set up a temporary station in an emergency. Normal setups will work in such extreme situations due to no commercial power and limited supply of fuel. In the universe of communications, Earth orbiting satellites are self sustaining after launch by solar panels mounted on its exterior. They are also compact and light. Instead of the typical approach, we need a solution that meets the following requirements it's made, with easily made with readily available materials, easily manufactured and reproduced, self sustaining, simple, effective, versatile, portable, and low cost. Our solution is a device that relies on solar energy to make up for the lack of commercial or generated power, it is small enough to be carried by an individual over a distance, and can extend the range of communications being passed. We find that in our daily and casual communications, we would rather text people with information rather than dictating them verbally. Texting is more efficient and more accurate. We need to pick a digital mode to work with. The first one that comes to mind is mesh networking, but that comes with its own problems. It faces issues such as path loss due to trees and buildings, and alignment of antennas. VHF packet can be deployed rapidly in less than ideal situations, 
as a data rate sufficient for the who, what, and where of emergency communications. But I know what you're thinking. Isn't packet radio an old technology? Isn't 1200 bogs slow compared to network speeds today? Maybe, but in an emergency, it's proven to be reliable to work and high-speed data is necessary. For the DigiPeter, we are using a Raspberry Pi with a TNC Pi board that allows packet capability. For power, we are using solar panels that provide energy to the Raspberry Pi and radio and full charge the batteries. The antenna is a 2 meter J pole constructed from 300 ohm twin lead and supported in a half inch PVC pipe. The antenna is comprised of two sections that are taken apart for easy storage and transportation. Each of the solar panel mounts are constructed from three 3D printed parts. There were a total of 36 parts printed just to hold 12 panels. A cylinder makes a good platform for mounting the solar panels. There are 12 panels arranged in four groups of three to provide 15 volts at two amps under ideal conditions, usually much less. The panels mounted, the panels mounted around the pipe fold down for transport and are positioned for best illumination when deployed. We tested all the power supply components on the bench to see if our assumptions were correct. The performance of the solar panels was not what we expected. The spec sheets predicted a total of 30 watts of power, but we got just over half that value. To summarize, our solution is a portable, self-sufficient, solar-powered digipeter. We wanted to use the Raspberry Pi for its ease of access and modification. Switching regulators for the sake of efficiency and 3D printed parts for the ability to be easily recreated. Our final design was compact. All of the electronics fit in a four inch PVC pipe. Starting from the bottom, you see two six volt SLA batteries. Above that is the power management circuits for the power for charge regulation. Above that is a Raspberry Pi with a CNC Pi hat. And finally on top is a two liter handy talkie. Here's what the finished project looks like in the deployed and stowed state. Here's a short video that portrays how we see the device deployed. After we finished, we realized we built an expandable platform that could be used for many things, such as an APRS node, a weather node, and a packet endpoint. With a PL259 connector, we realized we could put a variety of different antennas onto the system. The Raspberry Pi lends itself to an endless expandability of sensors and software. Special thanks to Carol Perry for the opportunity to present, and thanks to all that helped me. Abby for her work on the antenna and the end caps, to Caleb with his help with the Raspberry Pi and Linux, John Machoki for his guidance in completing the project, Mr. Bob Oppen for his contribution of antenna material and guidance, and especially all members of the 721 MCV. Thank you for your time.